Hi everyone. In this slide, we are looking at a slide of a section of the skin. Specifically, we're looking at hairy skin. So one of the features that you're seeing here where the pointer is, is the actual hair follicle itself, or actually hair shaft in this case. The, the brown part is the hair shaft. And the nice thing about this slide is you can actually see it going all the way down, or just about all the way down, deep into the lowest layers of the skin into the hypodermis. So here's the hair bulb. Okay, and in the hair bulb, we will see some melanocytes. These are brown pigmented cells, which are giving pigment to the hair shaft itself. So that's where your, the color of your hair is coming from. Now, if we look at the surface, oops, where are we? So here's the free surface. So the first part here is the epidermis. Now what you can see here is there's lots and lots of dermal papillae here, which tells us this is relatively sensitive skin. Okay, so this is skin that has many sensory nerve endings and sensory structures within these papillae, but are getting a little closer to the surface of the epidermis. Now below the epidermis is this layer right here. This is the dermis. And let me see if I can maybe bump up the lighting a little bit. I'm constantly fighting against my camera here. Okay, how about we increase contrast a bit? Okay, here we go. That has helped. So you can kind of see all the collagen here. This is the dense irregular connective tissue of the dermis. And then as we go deeper, you see there's a lot less staining in this area here. Okay, and this is the hypodermis. This is where we find the fat. That's where the adipose tissue is. Okay. Other features here. Again, we see lots of hair follicles throughout this. So here's a follicle here. Here's a section, an oblique section through a follicle. You see a bit of a hair shaft right there. And next to the hair follicles, near the surface, we have these glands. These are the sebaceous glands. Uh, these are the glands that produce the oils that protect your hair. And as we go a little deeper, we see these smaller sort of structures here, clusters of tubules. These are the sweat ducts. So there are sweat glands and sweat ducts within this skin as well. Here's another example here. We have sweat glands and sweat ducts. Whereas right here, again, we have another one of those sebaceous glands. Here's another one over here and another one over here. You can see it's closely associated with each hair follicle as its own set of sebaceous glands. So we've looked at this at low magnification. We have a general idea of what the organization is. So again, we have the epi epidermis, then we have the dermis, and then we can see the staining get a little bit lighter down here. That is the hypodermis where we would find the adipose tissue. Okay, so let's take a closer look at high magnification, see what happens. Here we go. So here we are. Again, epidermis. Here are the um, stratum granulosum right there, very highly pigmented. And then we have the stratum corneum right on the surface here. Again, this is the layer of dead cells. And this is why they're kind of flaking off at the surface. They're much more easily damaged during slide preparation. And so that's why you kind of are seeing a, uh, them breaking away, okay? So beneath this, so this again, this is one of the dermal papillae. So this is where we would find a Meissner corpuscle, for example, one of the touch receptors. And down here, what we have is the dermis. So in the dermis, we have um, a lot of dense irregular connective tissue, kind of a disorganized mess of collagen bundles and fibroblasts. Um, there's a little bit of more intense staining here, a bit more eosinophilic staining in this region here. We're seeing a bit of an oblique section through one of the our rectar pili muscles. So these are the muscle fibers that are connecting to each individual hair follicle. Okay, so here's another example. I think probably here more our rectar pili muscle here. Okay. And again, as we go deeper in, here's one of those sweat glands and sweat ducts that we talked about earlier. And here is one of those sebaceous glands. Again, sebaceous gland over here. 
and then there's a duct here leading down into a deeper area where you would have sweat glands. Again, here's the hair shaft inside of the hair follicle. Again, there's multiple layers in here to work through, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but you are welcome to. And in here, we have a lot less staining. Uh, we just see a bunch of dispersed nuclei, very tight, small, um, intensely basophilic nuclei, uh, little dots, basically. Uh, and those are the nuclei of adipocytes. Okay. Now, again, this tissue is not stained very intensely because the fat has been removed during slide preparation. Uh, and in this case here, at least on this slide, uh, this region is relatively damaged, so you can't really see intact cells very clearly, even at high magnification. So I'm not going to spend too much time looking for that. Uh, but let me take a closer look at the dermis and the epidermis. Okay, so let's zoom in. So again, here is our epidermis. Let's see what we can do about the contrast here. Here we go. It's a bit better. So here we have one of these dermal papillae. Here is a capillary going up towards the surface. Towards the interior of one of these dermal papillae, we have here the lower layers of the epidermis. Stratum spinosum is over here. Fairly easy to see that there is a bit of separation between individual um, cells here within this tissue. So you can see that the cells have uh, fairly intensely stained cytoplasm, but there is kind of this gap in between individual cells. So that would be the stratum spinosum. We have a stratum granulosum just above that, and stratum corneum. Okay. So let's zoom in on this just so you can see for yourselves the stratum spinosum. Okay. Let's try to get a closer look. Where's my oil? I think I might need to add more oil to this. One second. go and so here you can hopefully see that there are in fact these uh, light staining areas in between the cells and again these are sometimes referred to as prickle cells because if you look carefully in between these in these gaps you can see little spikes and basically that's basically evidence that these cells were connected to one another or are connected to one another through uh, these uh, desmosomes which are linking them together and preventing them from separating too much. Uh, and these cells just basically shrink due to the preparation of the slides. So fixation and dehydration to, to shrink these cells. So they kind of pull away from one another, but they can't pull, pull away fully because they are connected very strongly by these desmosomes. And so you would see in these lighter regions, these little lines, little spikes almost, that kind of look they're, like they're prickles on a cactus or something. Okay. And again, what we can see here is a very thin layer of cells, just one cell here that's kind of representing that stratum granulosum. And then everything else up here looks like it's starting to separate. These are dead cells at the stratum corneum. Again, a little bit more granulosum up here, you can see. Okay. Now here we have one of those dermal papillae. Again, we can see a capillary in here. contrast. That's not really helpful. Okay, so here we go. We got a bunch of red blood cells in a row. So we can see that this capillary is just wide enough for a red blood cell to pass through. Okay. Again, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum. You can see the cells separated from one another. And then we have a stratum basal at the bottom. Now down here, we have the connective tissue layer. I'm going to zoom out on this. Let's try to get some of the oil off first. Okay. 
So this magnification, we can kind of scan around a little bit and see that we have collagen bundles organized in different directions. So these eosinophilic sort of structures here at the pointer, for example, are bundles of collagen. And even here, you can see there's multiple different ones connecting uh, and going off in different directions. And so the nuclei in between them would belong to fibroblasts. And as we go deeper, some of these bundles get a little thicker because the dermis is subdivided into different layers. And in here, this looks a little bit different. And that's because this is different, it's a different tissue. This is smooth muscle. This is part of that one of those erector pili muscles that connect to the hair follicles. Again, here's a part of the hair follicle over here. And here we have some sweat ducts. Okay, so for example, here you can see there's the lumen of a sweat duct. And you can see that there are two layers of cells within the sweat duct. And so this would be a stratified cuboidal epithelium. And again, we can follow this down a little bit more, more of a longitudinal section through one of the sweat ducts. And again, throughout, look at all this. This is all collagen. And again, some of it is arranged kind of longitudinally here, where you can see this long part of a fiber. Here's another one that's pretty long. And then we're seeing some cross sections through a bunch of fibers as well. And this part right here, that's one of the sebaceous glands. Okay, so hopefully that helps you understand the skin. See you next video.